This week, what are the best new RVs for 2024? We have our buddy Josh the RV Nerd from Bish's RV on to talk about his favorite picks. Plus, we're coming to you from the Seattle RV Show up in the Pacific Northwest, and we're gonna tell you all about our experience here. This is RV Miles. Since 1912, L.L. Bean has been helping people get outside together with gear tips and advice for exploring all the possibilities of the outdoors all year long. Here's a quick tip for your next ski, snowboard, snowshoe, or sledding trip. Change into your socks and base layers when you get to the mountain or trailhead, not before. A toasty car ride is a great way to ease into the day, but it might introduce moisture that could make you cold later. Start dry and warm so you'll stay dry and warm. For more tips, easy how-tos, and inspiring stories, visit llbean.com slash explore. Welcome to episode number 309 of RV Miles. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two RVers who, along with our three boys, have been enjoying the RV life since 2016. Here at RV Miles, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from industry news to travel destinations, our national parks, and so much more. We're coming to you from the great city of Seattle, from the Lumen Field Event Center. Lumen Field is where the, the Seahawks play, and this is just such a gorgeous location for an RV show. We just looked out the window. It's a gorgeous day here today. The mountains are visible across the water. We've got such a wonderful view of downtown from here and from our hotel room. And it's so great to be here at the Seattle RV show. This is, I think, the biggest RV show up in the Pacific Northwest. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> but we're meeting so many of you here and we're doing lots of seminars, which has been a whole lot of fun. But also we're getting to see some manufacturers that we don't get to see very often, or at least more units of theirs. So if you don't know, most of the RVs in the US are made in Elkhart, Indiana and in, in that area, but there are a handful of RV manufacturers, including some branches of some of the major ones up here in the Pacific Northwest. But we're getting to see a lot from uh, Outdoors RV and Northwoods Manufacturing. Uh, Lance, who's down in Southern California, has a lot more units here than we've ever been able to see. A lot of truck campers, a lot of vans, a lot of small stuff here at Seattle RV Show. Yeah, I would say if that's the biggest difference between the RV shows that we've already been at to this year and the one that we're here out on the Pacific Northwest is what is actually being brought to the show. So as Jason said, it's a lot of truck campers. There's a lot of vans. There's a lot of smaller RVs. There are a few super C's and big fifth wheels, but it's very clear that the RV buyer out here in the Pacific Northwest is a very specific type of buyer based on the kind of terrain that they live in. And basically they're the kind of RVer that I want to be. There is nothing on this floor that I don't want. I am 100% in again on truck campers. I am 100% in again on a small little Lance. I'm basically 100% in on anything that's going to get me around the Pacific Northwest. There's a lot of uh, travel trailer toy haulers here too, which we, we see here and there, but we don't see a ton of. There's a lot of them here. I think it's really cool too that this particular show is associated and involved in like where the football team plays, where the Seattle Seahawks are housed. And it reminds me a lot of like when we would go to shows in Chicago and you would have these big giant event centers. Now down there it was at McCormick Place, which isn't yeah. too far from Soldier Field. But the amount of stuff that you can get into a space like this really allows for a lot of versatility, a lot of different products in here, and it's just been kind of cool to see. They have a lot of the RVs crammed in. So we're in the convention hall, which is part of the event center, part of the Lumenfield complex, but but a lot of the RVs actually spill out underneath the like concourse of the field itself. So you're underneath all the seating risers and all that sort of stuff. It's an interesting layout, something that I haven't experienced before at an RV show. We were talking to, and I think for the first time ever, we feel really confident in saying that RV design manufacturers have finally been listening enough that the lack of swoops and swirls on the outside of an RV, that just so overwhelming, like in your face pattern that had been so predominant in the industry for so long, is finally 
disappearing. It's looking so much cleaner. And especially here, there's a lot of like beautiful mountain scenes on the outside of rigs, which I really love. And I just feel like for the first time in eight years, there's less swoops and swirls yeah. and more just, I don't know. A lot more linear stuff. A yeah, lot of, you know, that's- we've, Nice we've, looking. <laughs> we've seen that the last couple of years, but it's more and more uh, going towards some really interesting uh, stuff. And we're seeing some, today we went through a, a Lance um, camper, a travel trailer that had a uh, blue interior, blue upholstery. And I was like, I, I don't know the last time I walked through an RV and saw a non-neutral color. Yeah, we did a short reel on it and I'll try to time that reel coming out with the timing of this episode so you can go and see what we're talking about and just go over to Facebook or Instagram, YouTube, and you can watch it. But we were both just like, this is really gorgeous. Yeah. And now the flip side to all of this too is we've had a lot of fun going into these truck campers because they are a plenty and these off-road, small little off-road travel trailers and kind of seeing what they do to either make a bathroom in air quotes <laughs> there and how they disguise these little toilets. It is amazing. And I keep looking at Jason and I'm like, this is a solo camper because there is no way I could be like, excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom and then just sit down and look like two feet is you there laying in the bed. <laughs> like, I, I had the realization though, you know, a lot of the truck campers do have full bathrooms in them or at least they have wet baths in them, right? Yeah, that's shower. the smaller but ones we're talking about. I'm really thinking a lot of about though, because we, you know, we have always dream about what it's going to be like when the kids are gone and what we're going to, what our travel lifestyle might be then. And we've talked a lot about maybe doing a van or something, um, but have you priced vans lately? Vans are so expensive. Now this is like the ridiculous extreme of it, I guess, but my dad had sent me a link to an Airstream. I think it was an Atlas. Airstream makes the interstate and the Atlas. Sent me a link to an Atlas and it was beautiful, right? And we've been in one. I think there's actually one here. And I looked at the MSRP. There's $325,000 yeah, for a van. A and I, you know, walking through these truck campers, I'm thinking, some of these have better room inside them than the smaller vans. You get an actual queen size bed, a comfortable space to sit mm -hmm. and a full bathroom and everything. And they're like $50,000. So, and you put that on top of a truck that you say you got a crazy good expensive brand new truck and paid like $90,000 for it you're still all in much less than a lot of the vans out there. Well, I think part of it is the lifestyle. Part of it is the brand. And I'm sure if anyone owns a van in that price range, we would love to hear from you. We're really genuinely curious. I'm sure there are some things it, inside of there that we can't even comprehend that really can't. elevate that. But I do understand, like, to yeah. me, that's a, that's a house, a really <laughs> nice big house in our hometown right. now. You can't beat the ability to sort of get up and walk into the back and, and be able to just I hear go back and forth. It's, um, vans you. are great for a lot of reasons. And there are some reasons why they are so expensive these days. Part of it is just the way vans are constructed, right? The shell is already existing. So they have to construct everything inside. Just takes a lot longer. Plus chassis availability is still a problem sure. for van manufacturers because all of our society has become so um, package delivery orientated, right? So Amazon and, and UPS and FedEx have just bought up all the vans that they possibly can. So it is hard for the manufacturers to get their hands on them and it costs them a little bit more when they do. Wouldn't turn one down if it was offered to me That's though. That's very true. All very right, true. we have a really big show today because Josh is back and Josh always has so much to say. Josh is one of my favorite people on the planet. Josh is just as genuine in real life as he seems over on his YouTube channel. We always love having him on. I will not be a part of this conversation because if I am a part of this interview, it'll just be Josh and I like just making fun of Jason and trying to get Camp Daddy to be a thing for like 45 minutes. Yeah, so I kicked her out. And so I, I, kicked I, out. But that's okay, because I show up towards the end and I don't even need to hear what Josh is saying. I know exactly what he's saying when he realizes I'm there. 
and I just keep laughing. We'll be back in a minute with our interview with Josh Winters, Josh the RV nerd from Bish's RV. We'll be right back. Chances are you've seen them on the road. That's because Blue Ox designs and manufactures the best towing products in the industry. Just look around. You'll find them on highways and campgrounds and anywhere you find people traveling in the great outdoors. Award-winning tow bars, base plates, and brakes. A full line of weight distributing hitches. Adjustable ball mounts and a new line of fifth wheel hitches. With Blue Ox, towing doesn't have to be a drag. To learn more about how Blue Ox can make your travel adventures even more stress-free, visit blueox.com. This episode is sponsored by the Park Wolf app. Ever found yourself in the heart of a national park surrounded by beauty, but unsure where to go or what to see? That's where Park Wolf comes in. Park Wolf is the ultimate app for exploring national parks. As you drive, the GPS shows you what's coming up on the road, and an audio guide will fill you in on what's there so you can decide if it's worth a stop for you or not. Gas running low, looking for a bite to eat or a bathroom break? Park Wolf's got you covered. It keeps track of the nearest gas station, restrooms, food, and pullover areas. And the best part, it works without an internet connection. And if you're a wildlife enthusiast, you'll love Park Wolf's wildlife maps and sighting notifications. So before you set off on your next national park adventure, download the Park Wolf app for your iPhone from the App Store. It's your ultimate guide to national parks. My guest today is really the greatest at giving RV tours out there. And probably, I, I think I can say this almost definitely, gives more RV tours on YouTube than pretty much anybody out there. I think my last, I, I looked through his his collection of videos over the last month, and he put out more than one per day, which is absolutely insane to me. And for some reason, the company he works for lets him pretty much do and say whatever he wants. He's a really fun and interesting guy. Uh, our friend and yours, friend of the show, Josh Winters, you might know him better as Josh the RV Nerd. Welcome, Josh. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. I I feel like I, I can only let you down after a buildup like that. I try to work to keep expectations low, actually. <laughs> We've known each other via the internet for, for quite some time now. We talk quite a bit about all the stuff that's happening in the RV industry, and I knowing that you see more RVs than I think uh, most people do, I, I guess a little disclaimer here, you work for, for Bish's RV, which is a, a, a fantastic chain of dealerships. So you pretty much only see the stuff that your chain sells, or you pretty much only look in depth at, at that stuff, I, I guess I should say. Uh, would that be accurate? Yeah, yeah, no, totally accurate. Um, you know, I, I'm happy to look at anything, but in terms of what I cover on camera, naturally, it's the yeah. things that we have for sale every day. But you sell know, quite <laughs> quite a lot of, of different stuff out there. So I thought it would be great to bring Josh on to talk about the new stuff available for 2024. We are in a new year, even though the sort of model year changeover in the RV industry actually happens at year round August. There's also some new stuff that gets released mid-year and it takes a while to see all the stuff that that comes out new of course. So I thought it would be great to bring Josh on to talk about the the units he's seen out there and and what might be interesting for for folks that are out there perhaps shopping right now uh for a new RV for this year. So with that, Josh Start us off with something that uh, that you think is is particularly interesting for folks to look at. Something I think that's just really crazy is the sheer volume of just crazy new and original stuff that's come out this year. And it sounds really funny, but manufacturers are able to be the most creative when they do have a little bit of um, free time in production. So when the industry was at full tilt plus, you know, operating at above normal capacity, um, for two years there, there was just very little of anything new. You were lucky if you even got new color decals from one year to the other. You almost saw some brands totally stagnate during that time because it's all they could do just to keep up with demand. But now that that's tapered off a little bit, it almost reminds me of when I came into the industry in the recessionary period of 2009. Um, everything got really fun, really exciting and dynamic and creative. And I think it's it's weird that's almost what restarts the cycle of getting people back into it. But I think really the first one I want to give credit and acknowledgement to is the Salem and Wildwood division of Forest River. 
Uh, if you'd have told me like two or three years ago that the current most innovative dynamic driving force in RV design was what was often referred to as an entry level stick and tin builder, I, I just said, I, I don't know that you're, you're thinking right. But the fact is, if you look at what they're doing today, it's unlike anything that's ever been done before. You know, there's often a trend out there of what's old is new, but they're doing stuff that's never been done ever in the history of ever, which I think is kind of impressive, really, you know? There's not a lot of truly original ideas left out there, like the view family of floor plans that they have. Um, the fact that, it, you know, the, you could have a private bunk room, you could have an office, it could be cargo space, um, a, a mother-in-law suite, maybe. Um, it, it's just crazy what they're doing, and, you know... <laughs> Giving people what they want, like windows on the campsite of the army, you like, what a novel idea, you know? But they're they're finding creative, fun ways to do stuff like that. And it's influenced all the way up from their their smallest little trailers, all the way up through their big laminated fifth wheels. It's it's and you're even seeing other brands now start to already dogpile onto those ideas. Um it, it's just really cool how they've you know, the Versa lounges and, and all the things they've done that really helped define them uh, as a really unique, innovative brand out there. I, I really give them a lot of credit for it. You know, we've been looking at potentially our what our next RV might be. Uh, and, you know, we've got the small Ibex and we've got the, the big Saber fifth wheel. And really, we, we want something a bit smaller, but we've been looking for something. We've got three boys that, uh, you know, my oldest is taller than me. So, you're looking for something with bunks for three large boys has been really, really hard. And actually, we looked at a Salem unit and and realized they had, they actually were one of the few we found out there that had kind of thought about let's let's actually put some big bunks in a fifth wheel. There's, there's you can find it in travel trailers for some reason, but fifth wheels it's really hard to find a big bunk house in that actually has bunks that are long enough for a for an adult size child. Yeah. Uh, that that's a really funny thing I run into all the time is there there really is not a lot of big person secondary sleeping and I think that's why um, the uh, what's referred to now as dual suite models the true two bedroom two bathrooms with a loft uh, is that the kind of thing you were looking at yeah that that's one of the options that we we've, we've definitely looked at you know often our issue with some of the lofts though is, is especially a lot of the mid bunks out there. Um, that that aren't able to do maybe a drop frame in the back or something is is the ability to actually put a a real mattress in the loft sleeping you know because sometimes that loft is such a shallow space and they give you that one inch teddy bear bunk uh and uh, even our youngest who it you know barely weighs like 50 pounds he'll say after two days mom my back hurts right and Every RV we've owned that's had those, it's been like, okay, let's let's change them out out pretty quickly. And you know, you can get uh, mattress pads and stuff, but once you thicken that up a bit, you you shrink that space up some, right? So um, yeah, yeah, no, totally. And it's hard to find something that's not you know forty eight feet long that 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 can handle our kids. But you know, that's what we get for having five kids. It's an issue at restaurants. It's an issue everywhere. You want to, you want to go to Disney. You got, you can only go to certain hotel rooms because there are only certain hotel rooms that sleep five people. It's just the life of a fa family. of five. What else you got for us? Well, um, there actually was, uh, uh, one that totally took me by surprise. And I now have 15 years of being, uh, 15 years of experience, rather, being a professional looker adder of campers uh, is uh, the technical term. I think that's actually on my, my business cards <laughs> that don't exist. Um, but Vibe, Vibe flat shocked me lately with, I think, what is their smallest model, but I'm pretty sure is going to become their most popular very quick, uh, even in its first year of production. And that's their little 19 RB. I walked into this thing and I looked around and said, okay, it's a small, light, little tandem axle couples camper. Then I started looking and I'm like, wow, it's actually got a really nice bathroom because a lot of those things are not bazooka butt friendly. They are not, uh, <laughs> they don't cater well to those who are, um, you know, anything but small in stature, you know? Yeah. And then I started noticing like it has this borderline walk in like giant closet that big storage and little campers is not something you usually run into and then finally 
the the RV industry is starting to reimagine dining. You know, for years it's been a booth or a table and chairs, a booth or a table and chairs, like like that's all there was. And these like extended breakfast bar kind of dinings with chairs or stools or something, especially overlooking the campsite of the RV, they're finally starting to catch on. And Vibe did that here. And it it's it was amazing how much it opened up the RV. Plus, Vibes are taller inside. I don't think a lot of people key into that right away. They're about three inches taller than the average bear. And I got all done with this. I was like, you know what? That was a really solid offering they brought to the table. Um, and I walked out and the rep was there. He goes, what do you think? Not bad for no slides, huh? And I went, what? I, 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 I was gobsmacked. It, I did not realize it was a no slide RV because it felt so expansive inside. And I stopped immediately with one foot out the door and, and did a, a 180 and looked at it. And I'm like, I'll, I'll be, that is a no slide model. And there's a lot of people out there who just do not like the idea of slide outs. And I get it, you know, the fact that they accomplished everything they did with no slide blew me away. And to me, that one just total tip of the cap right there. You're under 5,000 pounds with that under, under, uh, 24 feet with that and still have 62 gallons of gray water, which I, I love, but I, well, I love what Vive has, has done in the last couple of years too, because I feel like vibe used to the, the interior didn't really match the exterior there. They've got this cool, cool exterior yes. They're called vibe. Right. And then you go inside in a couple of years ago, if, if, if it was like, there was like sconces and, and, and fabric and stuff. And now it's a little, it's a little more vibey. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. The audio matches the visual, I think is a good way of saying it. Like it meets your expectation inside, outside, upside down. And uh, some of the stuff they're doing, like, you know, true queen beds, a taller ceiling in a small camper, making a small camper fit American sized people. That's really cool. And it's just not something that you find a lot. You know, the other thing I noticed on that one, it's got a crazy good cargo capacity. So you can actually load up the storage and, it's really been my experience that so many RVs ride around with with bare minimum cargo ratings, and um, I think that that's a good recipe for overloading something, and I don't think you could do that on this one if you tried, uh, unless you just loaded concrete mixes into the stupid thing. Yeah, 2,800 pounds. That's more than a heck of a lot. That's more than some Class A motorhomes out there. Um, I, it, you know, actually, it feels like a motorhome to me in, in a lot of ways, where you're like some of the smaller motorhomes where you get that transverse bathroom across the back which allows it to be sort of a bigger bathroom and give you a little bit more more room to to clean yourself up <laughs> yeah absolutely what's next but um an another brand that has been imagining <laughs> uh crazy things for a while is the grand design imagine whole family i think they came out with i think eight or nine new floor plans this year that's more than some entire brand's build. And they just, they they had this stuff just sitting on the drawing board and just went like, blam, there you go. Here's like all these models that have, the thing is they've never existed. They came up with like eight floor plans that the world has never seen before. Um, whether it's in their single axle AIM series, they're doing a Murphy bed in a slide, which they're, they're not the first to do it, but I think they're the first to do it rather effectively. Um, they're giving us good kitchen space and small campers like that, uh, up to their, their XLS series, the number of new floor plans they've come up with under 30 feet with like private bunk room slides or private bedroom slides. It's insane. If you haven't looked at their lineup, you need to go check out their lineup right now because it's unlike anything else. There's like all of their floor plans are practically unicorns at this point, at least everything that they just came out with. The number of people who come in and say, I want a bunk room, not like a couple bunks in a corner, but a bunk room where it's just totally shut off and private under 30 feet. It virtually doesn't exist, but imagine has cracked some codes on this kind of crazy stuff or a private bedroom slide under 30 feet. It's not that it's the first one I've ever seen, but man, it's, I can count on one hand, the number of them, you know, it's just really, really rare stuff. And They've kept up their aesthetic. That uh, that brand has really, I think, overall maintained some uh, very solid respect from the customers and community base out there. And um, an interesting thing, we actually have been peeling through warranty rates by company lately. 
And we, we sound, found this really odd dichotomy. We found um, where we had more claims approved by Grand Design, more warranty claims. So we're like, what is that about? But we noticed on average, they were some of the lowest dollar things. And we peeled it apart. And what we found out, it was here and there, little trim stuff. But there was also a bunch of little piddly nitpicky stuff that maybe didn't even necessarily fall under warranty. And they're just approve, like, just approve it, just fix it, make it right for people. And that is not something that we see a lot of in today's market. And the more that we've peeled through our warranty stats, actually the happier that we've been with that whole brand over there. Nice. We, yeah, we were looking a little bit at their, the, uh, 3210BH, which is a, mm-hmm. a 37 foot bunkhouse. And, uh, it's just like we were talking about before it, the, the bunks are, are long enough for, you know, a human sized people. Um, the, the, uh, the issue often with bunks is they end when you put them in a slide, that slide ends up being too short. And once that kid gets over, you know, five, five or something, they, they don't necessarily fit in there. And they put in that unit, they've got a lot of seating in the living space, which is another issue that we often find you, you don't get in some of the sort of two bedroom models out there. It's like, okay, we've given you two bedrooms of sleeping space, but here are two seats in the living space. Well, it's really funny on that vibe. You mentioned how it brought some motor uh well, vibes yeah. to the equation. If you really look at a lot of the more original floor plans from Imagine, I've always drawn a lot of parallels between motorized and what they're doing. Because like that 3210 that you talked about, that's a diesel pusher living room. Yeah. Uh, you know, with the, the way all that seating is laid out, I like you can go into a diesel pusher and find that living room. Like if you look at the 22 MLE, imagine I call that the toter home floor plan because that's a classic mini motorhome model that instead of something that you drive, they just threw a bed up front, you know. But it's it's funny how they've been able to take things from outside of the uh, the the the, the cookie cutter travel trailer market and bring it to a mainstream towable very effectively. What else you got for us? Moving on from there, uh, Ember has always done stuff different. They've always done stuff weird, and I like that. <laughs> but they just came out with their their first official true toy hauler, the 240TKR, and it is hands down the greatest Swiss Army camper I've ever seen, I think. It can do anything and everything to some degree. It's also their first wide body coach, which I don't think it's it's gotten a lot of notice for. But like everything in this RV can almost be removed and then put back in place without ever modifying or customizing the RV. So um like they they took their their missile bunk system, that convertible bunk system and they uh cranked it up to 11 basically where they threw a patio on the back of it where it could be a legit walkout patio with its own dedicated awning back there, by the way, which is just absolutely awesome to look at and sit under. It's just really, really fun. But the the bunks can go away. It can be a cargo loading space. It could be a toy hauler garage. You could also set it up for like, maybe you want just two single bunks. Maybe you just want storage. Maybe you want to convert it into a desk function. It, it can be a completely different RV every single time you take it out or even a different RV each day of your trip, depending on what you're doing. So, you know, maybe you're going to do some buddy hunting camp and okay, set up a couple bunks. Maybe you're going to, you know, go out and do some podcasting on the road like the Eppersons. You've got the perfect little place to do it. The fact that there's no slides give people a lot of uh, peace of mind. But then the whole bed situation up front, I, I went through in my video of that thing, all the different configurations that bed could set up for. And with like little two to three second snippets, it took me like a minute and a half to demonstrate everything that that whole front end of that RV can do because it can be a pair of 80 inch long twin beds, which first of all, the RV industry has almost never ever used or seen 80 inch long twins. And like a cool thing about that is you could set up just one twin. So it could be a solo rig. It doesn't have to be both beds. You can mash them together like a king bed, but the there's a center hanging wardrobe closet that slides on that thing. So you actually can have a twin bed with divider, still maintain hanging storage, or put together a big king bed, or put the whole thing away and have a giant monster lounge, or use 
like a bed, a seat, and a desk set up before you even mess with the whole bunk configuration. It's it's just insane. What everything that it does is absolutely insane to me. And um I, I, I think that that's gonna be one of those RVs that it it'll just do stuff that nothing else can do. And I don't think other manufacturers are gonna delve that deep into that kind of weird territory. I give them credit for doing it. Yeah, and because it's uh because it's one of uh Ember's Overland series, you get that independent suspension and you can pretty much take mm-hmm. it out into the middle of anywhere. I think this is a really great one for like putting e bikes in, you know, and it's kind of like a toy hauler, uh, where you you don't don't want to put a big side by side in something or you want to put some gear like kayaks or whatever in and, and yank it out at the campground and be able to sort of you know, go out on the, or not the campground out on public lands or wherever. It's a, it's a really cool unit and allows you some flexibility for the future too. If you're, you know, your family's changing size over time. Like that's exactly what I was talking about with us. It's like, you know, our oldest is going to be out of the house in a, in a couple of years. It gives you a little bit of peace of mind for, for future proofing. Yeah, no, the, I, I call it a garage mall because like, <laughs> It, it it has that kind of grandiose sort of feel, but it can also be very utilitarian. Cool unit. Ember has really come out of the gate in the last few years uh, since their founding with just some awesome different products that are uh, that are really really interesting to look at and um, and solve a lot of the needs that people have. It's not just like let's do something different because it's different. Let's actually do something that that solves some problems for folks. They also bulked up their their Big Mac solar package this year, and they're basically running on average about twice what anyone else in the industry is doing. So um, along with things like that, Truma Aventa air conditioner on that, like you have ultimate like mooch docking flexibility. You know, it's something where if you only have a 15 amp household plug available, you can still basically use the full function of the RV just about anywhere you're at for a very long time, which it's hard to find out there nowadays. So again, it, it just gives you the freedom to do anything you want. And even if you're not going to go off road, that suspension is the best riding, best handling system out there for, for my money. I, and I mean, do you have that on your Ibex? We do. And let, so let me tell you a story about that. Um, so we, <laughs> when I, when I picked that Ibex up from the plant in Indiana, uh, I had to then drive it to um, Palm Springs, California over the course of four days with my son. So we flew out to Indiana to get it and I needed some way to tow it, you know, cause I was going to have to rent a, a, a truck of some sort. And you know, the, the companies that, that rent trucks, they don't really want you towing with them. So they don't put hitches on most of them. So you can, you can go rent a Ram 1500 from like enterprise, but they don't have receivers at all. You can't put one on there, right? So we had a few backup plans. We were going to go with Enterprise because you can sort of choose any car in the aisle, right? So we're like, we're gonna we're gonna pick a truck, perhaps. And if that wasn't going to work out, we're gonna go. I mean, listen, I'm I'm telling you all this because uh, because I am. This is not kosher. They, they they don't want you towing with this. This was like kind of our last resort option. But so our our second our second solution was we were going to uh get a full size SUV because they usually there's just a plate that comes off on the back and the hitch is behind that the hitch is built in the body in in a lot of full size SUVs that didn't work out either so what we ended up with was the only uh truck that they had there was a Honda Ridgeline uh and it had it had a receiver on it and it had a towing capacity of 5000 pounds we were going to be just under that uh, with the Ibex empty, of course. And that little sucker towed that thing perfectly across the whole length of Route 66. And I, I credit that that independent suspension. I mean, we even towed, with our F-350, uh, we even towed our, our old Pioneer, which was 38 feet long. And, you know, our, our truck's the Tremor package, so it doesn't have the rear sway bar. And that was a nightmare, even with a weight distribution hitch. That thing was just swaying all over the road. Fifth wheel, no issue at all. But with the Ibex, rock solid. It's 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 wonderful. The independent suspension is just, I cannot say enough good things about it. No, that's absolutely one of the things that uh, I, I believe in totally. And had I not um, 
experienced that firsthand, so I'll share my story on it with you while we're talking about this, because this is also a newer thing in the industry, and more and more people are asking for independent suspensions. I think the RV industry is going to be slow to adopt them, especially in travel trailers, because it's the most expensive system out there, but Lord, the juice is worth the squeeze. It's so good. Um, when uh, my, my father and I were bringing back the first Ember, where that system uh, came from, you know, uh, for those who aren't aware, one of the founders of Ember, um, before they founded Ember, they briefly worked as a contractor uh, with Lippert and developed their uh, the Kurt Independent Trailing Arm Suspension that is often like in terms of Ibex and Nobo known as Beast Mode. Um, and they developed that and then built their company on it right afterwards. I, I'm thinking there was maybe a long-term plan involved in there, but funny how life works out like that. You know, it's like Jeff Goldblum said in Jurassic Park, life... Uh, <laughs> finds a way um <laughs> i just i don't do enough of the shirtless stuff like jeff does but anyway running along east to west in southern michigan is a highway called us 12 and it's pretty much it's pretty straightforward 55 mile an hour cruise control goes through a bunch of small towns but there's this one spot just uh west of where i live where it has a real quick sharp s curve over a set of railroad tracks you know you have to go over a set of tracks and you're going about 30 miles an hour over them, usually. <laughs> usually. Because as my dad and I were hauling the first Ember home, <laughs> talking about how exciting that thing was and how well it was handling behind us, we looked up and we're doing probably, we'll say the speed limit. I would be shocked if we weren't doing more than that. Um, and uh, that curve was right there. And we just went, oh, no. And... We whipped around that sucker, and we had no anti-sway, no weight distribution hitch, no nothing whatsoever. Now, we were driving an F-150, which is the, it was more than enough truck for a single axle ember. But the fact is that thing just followed right behind us like it was on rails. We could not believe it. Once we, we got straightened out, and you know, you're doing a little bit of uh, the steering wheel jerk because you're a little nervous and you're oversteering when you come out of a situation like that. And we look back, and the trailer wasn't wobbling at all it ate everything we threw at it and then some and i i was just amazed i also did a thing i that legally nobody should be doing this it's really stupid but kids don't try this at home but i had my dad later hooked up to a couple different trailers with different suspension packages and this is very unscientific but i just sat inside the camper and we went down the road around the block <laughs> once um you know when you used to sit in the back of you know dad's pickup truck bed kind of like that the fact is it was it was night and day inside of that independent suspension versus anything else. So um, that's absolutely one of those things that um, if you're going to be doing some serious, serious driving, if you want to get off pavement at all, consider that system or RVs that have it. Because the, the other thing is, it's been my experience, RVs with better suspensions tend to stay out of the shop because you're not rattle trapping yeah. that thing to death. Yeah. Like when you towed your Ibex up to Alaska, I bet you went over some oh, amazing road oh, conditions, some, right? Some really, truly awful stuff. Uh, and yeah. stuff that I, you know, I you get why, like, people are concerned. I, I, I couldn't imagine some of the roads we were on, which were the normal roads, uh, by the way, not like some out in the middle of nowhere stuff. Uh, doing that in a, you know, like a 45-foot motorhome, as a lot of people do. I would just a fear of like breaking my windshield from the twist, you know, stuff like that. I, I, I don't know if I could handle that, but we always felt comfortable and I've never, never felt the need for, for a weight distribution. You know, I'm towing with an F-350, but I've never felt the need for, for anti-sway or weight distribution um, since I've had that. And it's like you said, it's just rock solid back there. Well, the other thing I always think about, too, is towing safety. And uh, again, you get into that emergency panic and, uh, maneuver mode and you don't have time to think about the camper. You don't have time to consider your brake controller. And the fact is that trailer will just follow you so much better than so many other things. It's just fantastic what it does. Um, actually, uh, kind of segueing away from, uh, you know, specific RV models, but RV tech that I'm glad to see coming in. There is a lot in the way of anti-lock braking uh, and um, electronic anti-sway finding its way into the RV industry, especially towables. 
that I am personally very excited about. Um, when we were all young, dumb, and invincible, it's not the kind of thing we ever considered, you know? But once, uh, I, I think um, a lot of people will agree that once you have a family, you start to look at things differently and you start to realize the importance of life, really, and um, what you would do to protect your family. Yeah. And the fact is, most Toblerys have very little in the way of towing, safety, hardware, electronics, anything. Um, and that's that's a part of what excites me about that independent suspension package. And there have been some aftermarket anti-lock brake systems out there for a while. Like Tucson, I think, had one of the first. I don't know who the very first one was. I've never verified. But um, absolute credit to Lippert. Uh, they did such a bang up job on their ABS system. I, uh, I had the opportunity to take a, a personal test drive demo of that up at their facility in Michigan, um, last year. And I, I could not, we were on icy dirt roads that are, that are crowned like crazy. They're, they're really not flat, you know, like those Alaska roads you were talking about. And, um, we started just barely moving the wheel and the trailer's just going crazy behind us. We were in a one ton pickup and had a 26 foot trailer behind us and it was sketchy. And then uh, the fellow reaches down, clicks the button on his laptop, engages the, uh, the, the whole system. The, uh, and he starts pulling the wheel and hitting the brakes and the trailer's just staying exactly behind us. Like wherever the truck was going, the trailer was following like a train exactly like it was supposed to. And it, in, in those adverse conditions, I I was impressed, like, no matter how hard they really tried, they could not get that thing to, like, jackknife and spin around. Because that's that's the problem I don't think a lot of people realize. Um, when you uh, are in a panic brake situation on the highway or wherever, uh, when you stab the brakes on your vehicle, your vehicle has government-mandated anti-lock brakes, which is a major safety thing. But your trailer doesn't. And a lot of times what happens is the trailer tires can lock, uh, especially if you have your um, brake controller set up too high. And as they start skidding, you start to lose control of the trailer. And a lot of times it will pass the vehicle. And that's usually where a lot of rollovers happen when the trailer starts to try to get perpendicular to the road. Something catches and then everything flips and rolls over. And this system prevents that. It, it actively monitors each tire independently. If one tire starts to lock up, the system will independently allow that tire to rotate a little bit so that it continues to stay tracked on the road and behind you. And the control that you get as a result is just incredible by comparison. Have you ever uh, test driven any of those? No, days? no, but I did share in in one of our in our news video from the Tampa RV show, Lippert had took some folks out uh, to a racetrack and, and showed them. Uh, how it works, just like they did with you. But what I failed to mention in that video, and I'll link to that video in in the description for this uh, episode. What I failed to mention is that they couldn't get the track slick enough. So what they had to do, they laid vinyl out, vinyl flooring out on the track, and then soaked it down, and then go around the, go around this racetrack and slam on the brakes, and it just stops beautifully. Yeah. And what you notice is it's funny because when ABS works, it's boring to watch yeah. because the trailer just follows the truck and you're like, okay, so what's the big deal? That is the big deal. The fact that the bomb didn't go off is the big deal. Um, because if you turn ABS off, it's nuts. Uh, when Lippert first came out with their system, they have some awesome ABS on off test footage. That is, uh, I, they, they allowed me to use some of that. One of my own videos once it's, it's like, oh my gosh, it's, it's a real, real thing. But, um, you know, there's also, there's anti-lock braking, but there's also electronic anti-sway and, um, uh, Dexter, I think is probably one of the first, they kind of combine the two and you hear, if you see Dexter toe assist, um, it's, it's mostly on fifth wheels right now. That system is absolutely fantastic because, if you get hit by a wicked cross breeze or something like that, it basically does the same thing where it's just monitoring the tires independently. But I think it's if the trailer gets like I think it's like six degrees off axis or something like that, you know, so it can the, the trailer can still move behind you a little bit. But within safe reason, if it starts to get into that yellow uh, Tom Cruise danger zone, it will just tap a brake 
uh, very slightly where it needs to, almost like if your trailer's getting a little squirrely and you reach down and you manually squeeze your brake controller, it will sort of do that automatically so that you don't even have to think about it. And th again, the brilliant part is it works so well you don't even know that it works yeah. because you just drive. And especially, like you said, when you get those big 40, 45 foot fifth wheels, some of these things are absolutely insane how large they are. It's a major difference when you're going through like wind zones and stuff like that. And uh, it's it's an absolutely awesome, awesome system. And I hope we continue to see more and more of that out there. I'm I'm just I'm big into anything that promotes towing safety because this is a mobile based industry and lifestyle. But I don't know that there has been a lot of real safety focus on that. It's it's almost like before seatbelts were required in vehicles. Um. It's funny, the auto industry for a long time thought seatbelts being required because they didn't want people like, what do you mean? Cars are unsafe, you know? <laughs> um, yes. Well, you know, yeah, <laughs> they can be. Yes, they absolutely, when you're going 50 miles an hour and you hit something, it's it's important to, to, to have a seatbelt and not go through the windshield. Um, all of that tech has been out there and required of auto uh, industries since, what, 1997 or 98? The semi-tractor trailer industry has been required to have anti-lock brakes on all of their trailers. Those are with professionally trained, uh, endorsed drivers. Yeah. Now, the funny thing in the RV industry is that you and me took driver's training for the first, last, and only time at age 16, probably. Oh, wow. And according to everything, we are equally qualified to go do anything we want with a towable <laughs> RV. And the fact is, many people... I don't have that experience and um, anything that gives you that loading buffer, I think is a really, really critical thing. I think it's cool too about the, the Dexter tow assist is it also acts like an odometer for you for the trailer. So tell you how many miles you've towed that trailer. So you can use that to sort of judge when you need to grease your wheel bearings or, you know, uh, how many miles have been put on those tires. Sometimes it's hard to really do the math on how far you've, you've towed your RV. Some trucks kind of have the ability to go in and see like how long it's been in tow haul mode. But I, I love that. You know, that brings up a really interesting thing that has nothing to do with our topic here, but the, the fact like RV warranties, they're, they're typically delimited by time. Now in theory, they can also be delimited by how much you use the RV, but yeah. RVs don't have an, an odometer. Yeah. They don't have an hour meter. They don't have any, way to track how much you use it whatsoever um so that that'll be an interesting thing to see how tech may actually shape the future of rv warranties keep that one on your radar kids the next couple of years that could be an interesting thing to watch for so one of the the newest manufacturers out there uh that is really been very interesting to a lot of folks uh doing some some great work uh but you pay for it brinkley yeah, I mean, uh, talk about the new kids on the block that turned a lot of heads. Um, I, I think one of the mistakes people make sometimes when they look at a new company, uh, like I kind of saw this with Ember, and I saw it initially a little bit with Brinkley, but I think that that kind of subsided, was people say, oh, they're new. Mm -mm, the company's new. These people have been doing this very well for a very long time. But there's a couple different cultural aspects about them that I think have shaped um, everything, uh, about that company. And the, the, one of the key facts is the fact that the founders are the people who actually design the RVs and actually use RVs. And Jason, I know you and I have talked about how we sit here sometimes and wonder the average person designing RVs, have they ever spent a single night in them? And that's one of the differences is before you ever see a Brinkley get out there before I even get a chance to put the camera on it, you know, ahead of the curve, they have already taken it out for a weekend and run it through paces and already kind of figured stuff out. And then it's that kind of hands on difference and experience that it just from the ground up shapes a whole different thing. Um, you know, they don't want anything different than we do. They're they're consumers in a way just like we are. So, you know, things like we were talking about towing safety and reliability. Better suspension package, better tires, TPMS, like that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, they've um, they've had ABS various discussions. I don't know what their plans are there, but like they they think about that kind of stuff because they use that. Or just the simplest thing, like something a lot of people don't realize is 
a major difference between towable and motorized RVs is the ability to sit in and occupy a slide that is retracted. Mm. In the motorized RV, you have to be able to do that because you're using it going down the road retracted. It's, it, I mean, that's why there's, you know, there's seat belts in the in the chairs sometimes, but you don't see seat belts in a fifth wheel sofa because that seat is not intended to be occupied in transit. And uh, where where you see that done a little differently on Brinkley's is their bedroom slides. They're the only ones in the Tobal RV industry, to my knowledge, that say, yeah, as long as you're not going to do the atomic leg drop on this thing, you can use the bed while it's retracted. And that's that's a major potential climate shift for the towable industry. But they had to build it differently. You know, if you look at the weight of their 3100 versus the weight of a lot of other manufacturers who make that same floor plan the same size, it weighs a little bit more. There's more meat on the bones because of some of the things that they had to do to accomplish that. Um, and it's not that any RV I've ever seen is ever perfect, but generally speaking, they've been uh, proven themselves very good about following up with people, taking care of things, addressing things, um, and, uh, you know, preventing a lot of challenges right off the, the, the starting line. Like when I had a chance to go through their factory, they were having a heck of a time getting a uh, rack and pinion super slide properly adjusted in a unit. And they had the assistant plant manager over there. And this sounds like the kind of thing that somebody would say, but I got to see it in person. I even have it on camera. Their production line basically stopped for about a half hour and nothing moved until the slide was right. And that's just not normal in the RV industry. Normally, every X number of minutes, the line progresses. If something's not done, they have the sick bay at the end of the line that circles back to fix things up. And, you know, there were five or six empty workstations after the one with the slide problem. And everything before that could no longer progress. So basically the factory just stopped for a half hour while they fit, got this one unit right. And I've never in 15 years seen that from an RV manufacturer. And that it just inspired so much confidence in me, mm -hmm. you know, not to mention the fact they're just all the crazy things like the, the new floor planes, like the 3400 model Z with that. It. It's a rear patio, non toy hauler. It's again, it's kind of like how Imagine wasn't the first one to do a Murphy bed in a slide. It's just that I think Brinkley is the first one to do that concept effectively, you know, a non toy hauler rear patio. Um, and, and people have been asking for this thing no. since I got in the business in There's 09. so many people that want those patio spaces that have no interest in hauling a toy with them. Absolutely. And it's super fun being up on those things. But like their electronic dump gate valves, you're already seeing other manufacturers start to uh, to get involved in those. Um, you know, the different methods of air conditioning and whatnot. Uh, that's actually something I don't think Alliance necessarily always gets credit for. And they were one of the first ones to kind of reinvent the centralized air conditioning system that we all knew and expected out of RVs. And they are really shaping what a lot of manufacturers are doing with their air systems today. So credit to Alliance for really being the ones to kick that yeah. off there. Um, but, uh, again, the different floor plans, the different methods, all the different crazy cool things like on the model G's, they have triple more ride slide out cargo drawers on these things. Like it just, every nook and cranny is dressed and pressed to the nines on them. And it, it's really fun to go through like the drop down knife drawers and stuff. I want that stuff yeah. in my house. I saw that on the model G. I immediately went to the kitchen of my house and I and I'm like, I could put these in here because there's a hollow pocket under my cabinets. And we are seriously looking at outfitting my home kitchen with my, the Brinkley style of cabinetry. Well, it's, it's one of those things where like you don't you you don't think about when you're shopping for an RV, things like where the laundry goes and things like where the trash can goes in. And knives, like you, you don't want to throw knives in a just drawer randomly where they bang up against each other and stuff. You want to put them in a knife block or on a magnet or something. And so often there's just no place to do that. Right. And uh, yeah, they think of all those little, those little things that you might have issues with. That's it's, it's a, it's really cool what they're doing over there. Again, you're going to pay for it. Yeah. But at the same time, it, it's, it's kind of like, um, I, I, this is going to tell you a lot about where my mind is by default, but like bacon on a cheeseburger. Yeah. You're going to pay for it, but it's better. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it, sometimes juice is worth the squeeze. And there's so many times where, 
Um, I, I get it that there's only there there's a point where one of the best comments I ever saw on one of my break leg videos, this guy said, shut up and take my money. And then he puts in italics, checks the price tag. Then he says after that, I do not have that many money. And, and I was like, that's I, I totally get that. I get that at the same time. But there's so many people that are, are just saying I would absolutely pay more for for something that is just better in some way, shape or form. And it's it's awesome to see a manufacturer really kind of dive in neck deep into that and uh and, and really explore that to its fullest. Well, Josh, let's move away from from talking about RVs a, a little bit, uh, at least new models. Let's talk about your company. Bish is, uh, is like I said, just the fact that they let you you know ramble your mouth on or whatever you want to talk about is, is a great great thing. It would be, it, seriously, I mean that with all honesty. Uh, you. Uh, are able to on on the on the YouTube channel talk about RVs uh, as you have here in a very open and honest way, and that's a refreshing thing uh, coming from from a dealership chain. I know you did that before your location was was bought by Bishes, and I think it's just wonderful that Bishes has sort of taken the reins of that and allowed you to sort of uh, continue to just promote this sort of open and honest policy with with your viewers. So I know that extends a little bit into the company itself. It's not just about uh, Uncle Josh's YouTube channel. So tell us a little bit about Bishes. Well, that's one of the things that I I was very nervous about leaving my family's business and joining the Bishes team. Um, but from day one, they said, basically, we're going to let you cook. Uh, and in a, I, I really genuinely feel they have uh, taken the reins off me even more so than when I worked for my family. Cause there are certain topics that I've, I've hit on like, um, helping people understand what a full time RV warranty means and does not mean that's the kind of thing. Like I recently, yesterday at the time that we're recording this, I put a video out. It's like 11 reasons you might not want to buy an RV. That concept was, was given to me by our wow. president. And, uh, he, he's, he says, you know, we want happy customers. We want them to walk into this with good expectations. Is this something you think you could talk about? And I'm like, well, yeah, I could think of a lot of reasons that I've seen customers fall in various pitfalls in my years. Um, and I could maybe point some of those out. He says, you should absolutely do that. And I I love that culture. And they, the fact that they, um, I don't always just get everything right. They really support me. And uh, they, they, they're, it's genuinely from the top down. I couldn't do what I do the way that I do it without the absolute blessing uh, of, you know, the, the top brass of the company, as I like to say. So that's a really cool thing. But one of the other things that I, I again, I really like about our general culture, and I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, we're perfect. We never make mistakes. But it's, it's with that in mind that we are uh, publicly launching our uh, Bish Fix platform. Um, it's not a secret that a lot of RV service is broken, basically. You know, we, we were doing some uh, peeling through some stats. And you might know this because you're a little closer to the business, but let's play a quick game here, Jason. What do you think is the average repair event cycle time from the moment you drop an RV off at a dealership to the moment you pick it back up? How long does uh, it take? I believe, it's a, I believe it's about a month right now, isn't it? 71. 71. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah, that's and that's terrible. That's so thirty is the low end. Thirty okay. is the low end. Seventy one is is a pretty reliable number. It's it's absurd. That is, that's unacceptable. Yeah. That's absolutely unacceptable. Eight weeks yeah. basically. Um, the the challenge is there's there's a you know a lot of different hands in say like the warranty and service honeypot. And um, what a lot of people don't realize is the, the way that a lot of RV warranties are structured, like let's say you just have a problem with your microwave. Well, you can look up on Amazon and say, well, in two days I can have a microwave. Why can't you buy me that one? Because the manufacturer's money isn't structured that way is the, the simplest shortcut way I can say it. Um, you could have that uh, microwave in two days if you're willing to pay for it. And I think that sucks. Uh, the, the other thing too is typically... Warranty processes require that a technician has diagnosed something and then we send it to the the factory. Then we wait on approvals. And a lot of times we have to call them and be like, we haven't seen any action on this. Can you take a look at this, please? And then they almost always tell us, you need more photos. So we go get more photos and then we wait again. And then we rattle the cage again. 
and then we finally get an approval and maybe we get parts sent to us. And I swear, dude, half the time the parts are wrong when they show up. It's not the thing that we need, even though we took a picture of it. Um, and I get it. It's really complicated on the other side of the fence. I'm not trying to just throw darts. It, like that's It's a hard job. I don't know that I'd be any better at it. But when the, par- the right parts do show up, half of that time they're damaged. And then we got to wait all over again. And it's it by the time this is all finally said and done, it's like two months. That's ridiculous. And we were trying to think like, how can we uh, narrow this down? You know, how can we make this any better? And uh, again, we call it Bish Fix. But uh, the way it kind of works is it's this is something that any of our customers new or used. I don't care because even if it's used RV, it's new to you. Um, you get as part of our, our Diamond Club package of benefits. So for the first year you own the RV, you, you're already auto enrolled in this service. And if you're you're out there camping, your your awning doesn't want to go out or whatever it is, you call uh, our team. We have master certified technicians basically in our U.S. based Idaho call center right at the the top level of our our main building, and they basically video chat with you so they can see what you see, and uh, they can. We found that forty percent of the time. We are resolving someone's challenges off that call alone, avoiding the entire visit to the RV service center completely 40% of the time, because there's a lot of people like, imagine this, this is such a common scenario. You, you, you get that really good end of season fall deal on an RV, but you're not going to get to camp with it right away. Well, then come springtime, you're like, how do I light the water heater again? And you don't remember stuff. It's been four months. You went to sleep a couple times and we're able to talk people through a lot of that. Or we just find out, oh, you, you need to flip your battery disconnect. It's so many, so many little things that we're solving that it's just keeping people on the road. So the other 60% of the time, we've already had a tech officially diagnose what's going on. We're already sending in warranty requests. We're already ordering parts so that when the things show up, when the parts show up, you bring the RV in and uh, 85% of the time we have the RV back in your possession in wow. three days versus let's let's just say you know again the the best case scenario industry average 30 days but 30 to 71 days we're we're doing 10 yeah. times better than that 85% yeah. of the time and of the other 15% where we don't have stuff resolved quickly because there's extra i don't know parts or something um it's still 30 to 40 days and we get people back out so at, at, at the very worst, we're still doing the, the very best of the industry average on this platform. And it, we are really, really excited about it. And we're, we're, it's very new. We're still finding um, little pitfalls, little, oh, uh, communication breaks, little things like that. So it's, it's not perfect, uh, but we, we're at least trying to make an attempt in an industry that so often is just very happy to, to just remain at the status quo, even if it's uh, a, a standard of misery. Uh, we're, we're trying to do something better there and we're investing a lot of time and money and effort into this. And mark my words, in two or three years, a lot of your big dealer groups are going to have their version of it. And we're, we're, we will have done a lot of the research for them. Kind of like wherever there's a Walgreens, you'll find a Rite Aid next door. Where there's a McDonald's, you're going to find a Burger King. But we're... um we're just trying to find a way to do this better because it doesn't have to always be awful. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, the initial results on this have been very successful. We are starting to open this up where if you're a non vicious customer, you can call in and there's a, a fee or something that we can kind of talk you through some stuff. But um, we, that's really by availability. So come summertime, you know, we just may not be able to get to everybody like we'd like to, but we're we're doing the best we can to really prioritize our customers. And that's something that I can get behind. It makes me feel good coming to work every day because we're not perfect, but I see that we recognize that and we're making the attempt, you know? Well, my friend, Josh, the RV nerd uh, of Bish's RV. Bish's has locations all across the country. You should check them out if you're interested in, in buying a new RV and check out Josh's channel, of course, on, on YouTube to get some of the best walkthroughs you're going to find of RVs, uh, whether you're going to buy from Bishes or not. One of the, one of the things I love about you is you don't, you don't necessarily care. I'm sure you care, but the content is driven at the broad, broad range of folks to, to look at and, uh, and help them make a decision when they're, when they're buying a unit often imitated, but never matched, uh, Josh, the RV nerd from Bishes RV. And I got to th- extend a special thanks to Jason Camp Daddy Epperson for inviting me out. Stop trying to make that happen. Ha, 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 ha.
It's going to, it's going to happen. <laughs> oh boy. Thanks a lot, Josh. It's really great to see you and really great to have you on the show. RV Miles is sponsored by eTrailer. Did you know that eTrailer.com is focused on putting actual hands on the products they sell? That allows representatives to see, touch, and know exactly what it's like to use the product, providing you with quality service and recommendations based on personal experiences. If you're looking for a one-stop shop, eTrailer.com has you covered with a variety of RV items, including towing options, interior accessories, replacement parts, storage, and more. Visit eTrailer.com slash RV miles and receive free shipping on orders over $99. That's eTrailer.com slash RV miles. All right, welcome back to the show. It is time to check the level of our tanks. Sponsored by Liquefied RV Toilet Treatment, the no BS toilet treatment. You can find it in our Amazon shop at amazon.com slash shop slash RV miles. Okay, Jay, what is in your black tank this week? My black tank is, you know, I love coming to RV shows. I love walking around them all day. My black tank is concrete floors. And the mm. fact that you have to stand on concrete, when you go to places like this, uh, it just... You know, when you go to like the Chicago Auto Show, I haven't been to other auto shows, but the Chicago Auto Show, the I'm sure other others are similar, especially the big ones like Detroit. The manufacturers often bring in really thick padded plush carpet so that you stay in their areas for longer. Obviously, that's not really feasible at an <laughs> RV show like this no. where they've got so many RVs. An auto show is like, here we have one car and a heck of a lot of space around it. Here we've got slides that are kissing uh, each other, but um, I, it's it's just a pain to walk on concrete all day. And I wish, you know, I've tried so many different shoes, you know, it just, I can't stand it. Can't stand it. You're not wearing Crocs. That's the I, problem. Maybe I need to wear maybe Crocs. Maybe you need to wear Crocs and maybe you don't. <laughs> no, I do have thick sole walking shoes on and it's still. Don't, don't age. Don't age those because I'll tell you what, when I went to Tokyo, yeah. Back and I was like 25, 26 when I went to Tokyo. Uh, I literally walked around in Crocs the whole time I was there, and it was like walking on uh, clouds. See, this and is something I never it. knew. I never knew that you've ever even owned Crocs before. They were gifted Crocs. Like they, <laughs> I don't even know. My aunt had them, and they didn't fit her. And she was like, hey, do you want these? And I just got them because they were so soft. And I thought, well, these will be really great. Like just when I'm at home, when I get off of work at night, cause I was bartending and I thought this would be really nice. And then when I went to Tokyo, I, they were so comfortable and I was just gonna wear them like on the plane. Nah, I walked around Tokyo the whole time in those things. Our, they were amazing. Our friend Joshua Sheehan uh, from RV Gear and Far, uh, it says that the Crocs are the ideal camp shoe um, and I, I think a lot of people feel the same way. I would argue that I would, I'm more of an UFOs person <laughs> now, but they're still in the, the same wheelhouse. I mean, we just bought Ethan his first pair of Crocs. If any of our kids are Croc wearers, it's Ethan. Yeah. So we did just buy him. Okay. What's, what's, what, what's the mode when you, when you put the actual strap on the, on the heel, what's that called? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Ethan knows though. Cause he was like, something like relax mode. No, no, no. It's oh. like action mode or something. I can't remember this. <laughs> Somebody will chime in in the comments. Anyway, I, you know, I, it is really nice in an RV to have a shoe by the door that you can slip on, slip off and go sure. for the in and out and in and out and in and out, especially when you're packing up stuff. I love having a, a good camp shoe. And the ones I have are nice. They're those sort of quilted ones, right? We they're got not a, great in the summer. They're too hot for the summer. Absolutely. Yeah. What's your favorite camp shoe? You yeah. should either let us know over in the RV Miles Facebook group, or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave it down in the description below. We'd love to know what your favorite camp shoe is. All right. What is in your fresh tank? Uh, my fresh tank is sort of looking out um, over all the RVs. You can't see it if you're listening to this episode, but we're standing on a balcony above the, the RV show. They're just one of the halls here in the RV show. There are actually three different halls where they've got RVs. And I am seeing solar on almost every oh. single unit. And I think that is such a great change in the industry that's only really happened in the last two years or so, where uh, virtually everything is coming with the bare minimum of solar. I mean, there's some things out there, like there's a Tiffin down there that Looks like it has like 800 watts of solar on top of it, which is a, a great start. Um, 
And you know, of course, most of them are expandable. So once they've put solar in and some wiring and hopefully thick enough wiring that you can expand it to a decent amount, but just starting with a bit of solar that you can expand off of is really helpful for, for most RVers out there that aren't, you're not gonna spend weeks boondocking at right. a time, but like for the quick overnight and for keeping the fridge going when you're in storage and stuff and being able to turn the lights on and the, keeping the battery charged and all that, a little bit of solar could go a long way. Couldn't agree more. All right, what's in your black tank this week? Uh, so my black tank actually is just, it goes to me and this environment that we are in right now trying to record this podcast. We are completely out of our element. We do not have our headsets on. We are wearing <laughs> lapel mics or lava mics. What do you call them? What are these called? Ro Lavaliers. Lavaliers. Lapel, Lapel's, same thing. They're both the same. No, yeah. all this. Mm -hmm. like... We're actually not wearing lavaliers because I... lavalier is actually... When you have the cord and it's the little we're mic. We're clip-on mics. Yeah, I don't know. We're they're they're our little wireless mics. Body mics. Uh, we're wearing those. We're standing up. And I can't stop doing the mom sway. <laughs> and I know you all know what I'm talking about. But if you're watching this, it is just the biggest effort for me to stand still. This is 10 years now since I've had, well, no, 8 years now since I've had a baby on my hip. Really. And I... When we're rocking getting, the baby to sleep. I yeah. know. When we are doing things, like when we're just standing talking to people, I've become so aware of this. Or I, the camera gets in front of See, me and I get and I'm standing look, and I get really hyper aware of my posture. This is a complete and total like acting for the camera. I do the class same thing. That I, yeah, it I, goes right back to my black tank though. I do it because it's taking pressure off one foot and put it on the other and oh, back and forth no, on one on one and the other. I'm just I'm just cruising <laughs> here. Like and somebody give me a baby like when I do this because I could just rock it to sleep for you. But it's all I get the camera comes out in front of us and we're standing and I am 23 years old all over again in Barbara Robertson's class, like having to stand in front of a camera and talk to it and like absolutely like terrified of it. There is something about standing up and putting oh, a camera. Time. 309 <laughs> episodes. <in here. laughs> what they've all been, 306 of them have had us on our butts. <laughs> so this is just black tank to me that I cannot seem to just chill out in front of a camera when it I'm forced to be on my feet. <laughs> All right, what's in your, uh, what's the other one? What's in your fresh tank this week? Complete 180 fresh tank to us for doing a really solid job yesterday at the ABC affiliate station live. Talking oh about yeah, the show, we were on the, about ourselves. we were on the TV news y'all. <laughs> we were on the local news and this isn't like a toot toot, we were on the news. It's more like toot toot, we didn't say anything like that they might have needed to bleep. Like, I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> I get very nervous. Not that, you know, it, for any mile marker that watches lives, it's not like we're sitting there and it's just this wild environment or anything like that. But there is an element when you're live that, like, you know no one can go back and edit that. If it's just a gaff, even if it's just using the wrong word. Like, I am notorious for using the wrong word to express myself. Like I, I get close to what I'm trying Are to say. Combining two words <laughs> that sort of mean similar things into one. Like when I, do you have an example? Uh, um, like awesome sauce? Down, you know that? down posit. <laughs> that's a hybrid of down payment and deposit. But uh, that's so, a joke. Let's go, no, no, it's only a joke now <laughs> because it was a real thing one time because you're like, do we need to go put the down? I think it was when we bought our first RV, you were like, is it time to go put the down posit down or something? Do we How, need to give them the down posit? How, How much is the down you? posit? How dare you tell my secret? <laughs> <laughs> it's like when, <laughs> it's like when I will tell you that oh I, I have really I have to even think about it before I say it that I have really achy legs. <laughs> I <laughs> I am notorious for saying I have lakey eggs. <laughs> That's, that's a whole different and thing. And that is a whole other issue that we don't even need to get about on this show. But I'm just really proud that we got through that segment. I should say maybe it's just a fresh tank to me that I got through that segment and didn't say any, like, down posit. I didn't say AQ. You did a great job. And if um, folks would like to look at it, we 
They did put it on YouTube and we'll link to it in the description. There were no gaffes that at the end of the night, I was able to go to bed and be like, I didn't confuse this with the other thing. And I felt very proud of myself. So I am, I am learning how to get through lives without making, <laughs> without using words like down toss it. All right, that's it for this week's episode of the RV Miles podcast. We got to go do a seminar. Yes, we do. But hey, we have our next monthly night live coming up really soon. So we would love to see you over there. Uh, RVMiles.com slash mile markers for more information. Otherwise, stay safe, stay healthy, go put on some comfy Crocs, and there just went a bird. And keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> that bird just zoomed right in front of us. <laughs>